Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Welcome to In Post. Thanks for joining me today. Today is a live edit. Live is in air quotes, not live streaming. What I am doing is taking a photo from my library. I've never processed before, have done no work on it. We turn on record and we just process the photo from beginning to end. The photo I'm going to do today is one of the long exposures I captured in La Jolla. If you watched In the Field a couple of days ago, you saw some of the field footage from that. You can check it out. Links in the show notes below. There should be a card popping up somewhere if you're watching this on YouTube. But with that, let's get into this uh, live edit. So this is the, the photo I want to edit. And uh, this was the first of two compositions that I worked on. I had some that were uh, shorter exposures where the waves were coming in here, but it just, um, I don't know, it just didn't capture the feelings that I had that morning out uh, on location where it was, it was very calm, it was very serene, very quiet, and I just liked the feel of this very long exposure. Now, I know this isn't the look that everybody kind of likes, but for me, I, I enjoy this type of photo. It's uh, kind of very zen. Uh, and doing a quick assessment of what needs to be done. Uh, I certainly want to double check the horizon. You now this wave crest here is kind of, uh, I think it's confusing the eye a little bit. This looks pretty straight, but we'll double check that. I'll do some digital beach cleanup here and just get rid of all these little bits of seaweed and kelp and so forth. Those are taking away from the story, which is just this little arc of rocks and a nice few triangles here going on. Um, thinking about this in, uh, I'm thinking in black and white, but we'll see how things go. Uh, there is some nice hints of morning color there, but the foreground is pretty subdued. We'll just see how the processing goes and maybe we'll go in a, a black and white direction, maybe not, maybe something like really a high key. But let's start with the basics. Um, we make sure lens corrections are set. That's good. And I want to do some checking of dust spots. So Q key. A and wow, the sky is actually looking really nice and clean. Let's uh, where's my function key? I got a new keyboard here, so things have things have moved around on me a little bit. Let me just skim through here. So there's something something over here. Let's go ahead and hit that, and maybe that. That's good. Moving down one pane here. Okay, this stuff is going to have to go there. We'll just start clicking around here to, to clean this up. Is my opacity low? No, it's high. Okay. Just felt like it was a, a very shallow click. Like that. I know this part's going to be the boring part, but uh, hopefully it won't take too long. We can uh, take a short coffee break or fast forward <laughs> maybe uh, maybe 60 seconds. Let's see how quickly I can do this kind of stuff. Uh, let's see here, and thankfully, because this is a long exposure and there's just nice smoothness on the sand, this is all a very uniform kind of thing. The retouching tools in Lightroom, you know, there's just this simple spot heel is working great. Let's go to the next area, back to checking out anything sensor-wise, and here's our next segment of kelp. That one actually looks like an honest-to-goodness dust spot. The other ones just look like bits of seaweed that are out there. So we'll whip through these as quickly as I can. This one will be the one that will take a little bit of extra paying attention to looking at it live. So actually, maybe a sidebar here. One of the advantages, uh, well, not an advantage, an observation I'm kind of making here. I'm pressing this A key. I'm turning on this visualize spots on the bottom. And you saw me just hitting a bunch of these things without really paying attention to what the result was. You know, just hitting these, hitting these, hitting these. And then when I turn off that visualize spots with the A key, I'm taking a second look around. And if I obviously see, ooh, that retouch didn't work, uh, then it needs to be cleaned up. If I didn't see that, well, chances are the retouches is, is nice uh, and it'll be clean. I will have to check it when you do any contrast type of work just to make sure nothing else shows up. So let's just wiggle through that one. Ah, that came out really good. All right, good. Nice when there is a, a clean background. And the last but not least, we'll check the last segments of this here. Now this piece here, for now, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. Um, uh, I don't know. Actually, maybe not. Let's let's go ahead and, and remove it for a moment and see what that does. And then zoom back out. Maybe another 
another sweep to kind of blend that. That got too that got too untextured. Shrink that down, maybe just that part there. Oh, that's terrible. Undo that. Try again. Better. Let's stick with that. That's a little bit of a cleaner exit from that corner. All right, so we've got a clean looking photo. Moving on, histogram looks pretty good. Let's do our basics here. Um, let's start with with our with our color looks, and we'll do white balance. Find me a good gray. It's going to be in the actually the sand was pretty darn gray. That's actually pretty darn gray right there. Good. Um, okay, and let's just hit auto just to get a feel for what are we looking like in color. That's okay. That's that. What am I looking like in black and white? Still kind of dingy. Um, actually, it's interesting that things got underexposed when I hit that auto button. Uh, let me do a option reset on that. So this is still pretty flat uh, versus the color treatment. Hmm. I do kind of like the colors. I like the greens on the moss, like the pink in the sky. Let's start working with that and see where this takes us. Uh, we'll play with warmth. This Custom auto versus say cloudy will be 55. That's good, or 60, that's way too warm. Uh, daylight would be 55 versus the auto, which was like 51, right? Let's put the difference. Look at that. Versus daylight. I kind of like the purpley tone that daylight's giving it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for that, that type of look. All right, let's move on here. Uh, I do want to get that exposure up a little bit. And that white point pushed out there. Pretty close to the edge. Um, we can do the option or alt click thing for the, the black point. You know, it's on the far left edge, there's a couple of speckles of pure black. That's great. Let's double check that with pure white. Push and then come back. I don't want to have... Uh, hot spots there. Shadows, open those up. And I'm doing this manually because I didn't like what auto did. It uh, it really kind of crushed the exposure, and I, it just it just didn't work for me for this photo. And what about contrast? Push contrast a little bit too much. I don't want to push it so much that I introduce. I like that kind of almost filmy feel. Look, like I push forward. This kind of kind of loses something here. So push some. Now 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 I'm now I'm now I'm like reconvincing myself of something different. I I kind of like that look. Let's try let's try this. Let's see where this takes us. Okay. Um, what else did I say I needed to check? I need to check the horizon line. Let's just double check that. So crop tool. That's I'm not rotating at all. I'm just clicking and holding to look at that that uh, grid there and that looks pretty darn straight so we're not going to touch that at all so no crop on that um, what else to do let's get some well texture I'm gonna push texture for a minute and see what it does it actually is pretty smart notice that I'm gonna push it really far notice the rocks are getting crisp and even, even some of the rocks underneath this, this misty bit of sea is getting crisp. Remove that texture, add it back, and the rest of the scene is staying soft. That's great. So we'll do that and a tiny touch of, of clarity. Um, what else? Let's try opening up this rock here. So let's get a elliptical gradient on there. I want to invert it so I'm affecting the inside of it. Let's just start with a lighten. So I'm brightening that up a little bit. We can check before and after. Before. After. And range mask it. Let's take luminance mask. Show the luminance. And I want to limit that so it's really only hitting the more shadowy areas. Like that. Stretch it out a little bit. Maybe catch some of that, that underlying rock there turn off that luminance. So now, before and after, that's nice. That's good. Because that, that's an interesting feature of this photo, and that's where there's that little bit of splash of color. At least when I see this photo, when my eye goes through the scene, I'm kind of, 
I'm kind of caught down here. I, I, this this thing grabs me right away and it's directing me in. I hit this and then there's some splash of color here. I'm led back in because I'll, I'll follow this back down and then I kind of lead my way out through the rest of the scenes. So that's kind of what's going on in my eye for this. Um, I think another thing here, as we've done some adjustments, I've noticed a few more little like spots and distractions that have shown up. Some things down here and a couple of spots in this area here. So we need to revisit uh, spot healing. So let's zoom back in and take care of these little guys here. One, two, three. Okay, that's good. Pan over. And it looks like remnants of the seaweed that didn't fully remove. Probably the feather on my brush was was pretty, uh, yeah, the feather's up there pretty high. It's up almost near 70. And so that was preventing it from getting a, a super clean look. I should have made my brush bigger. Matter of fact, we'll do that for this one right here. All right, okay, I'm not gonna make you watch me do any more digital cleanup on that. If there's a couple of more stragglers, I'll take care of that so you're not uh, bored to tears on this. Uh, now, one other thought that's that's coming to mind is the highlights of the whitish surf that are going through here. What can we do to bring that up a little bit uh, in such a way that it kind of just kind of creates a feeling of you know things moving around and in through here? Just another a bit of interest. Um, we've got a couple of approaches. Let's first try it with a curve. So let me go around in here and find these points on the curve. There's one that's roughly in the same place. So right now I'm hovering over the different tones and I'm watching the tone curve to see where those points show up. And most of them are showing on what I'll call like the second spike. We've got spike number one, spike number two, and the third one would be the stuff up in the sky probably. But looking around in here, Okay, now this area, that's like the second spike. So that's kind of our, our lower mid-tones. So not bad to have a point on there. Um, okay, so let's take, I'm gonna hold down the shift key. I've got a different video that talks about the shift click thing where um, you can guarantee you're only going in a vertical direction. And then shift click down there. So we're kind of doing an S curve here. Let's see what that does before and after. Now that affects the whole scene. It actually feels a little heavy. So I'm going to take that that one back up and that one back down a little bit. Very, very gentle. Before and after. I like that. So I'm going to keep the curve. Let's now try a second approach with a radial. We'll use lighten. I'm going to make a very big radial filter here, turn on invert. So I'm affecting the inside of this. I'll go to that range mask again. And this is kind of like uh, my, my lazy approach to dodging and burning. If I start shrinking this range in, and then let's, let's taper this down really in here. Um, rotate it around a little bit so I'm starting to pick up some of this area. Let's lower that feather some so it's stretching out there. And I want to dial in kind of a where just those really brighter parts of that water are. You know, kind of, eh, maybe, let's, let's see, let's see what this does. That's a pretty, pretty nuanced mask, and that brightness is way too much. Take that exposure down, nudge it up a little bit. Ooh, wow, that's, I'm not even sure how much that's gonna show through on the video. Um, it's very minimal. Uh, I'm going to keep it uh, and just make sure I'm getting, well, how do I want to explain this? I, I don't want to add a vignette because if I do that, it's just going to darken the corners. And this is turning into a kind of a brighter, airier photo, but I do want the eye drawn in. So a way I can do that is having a brighter portion in the center. I'm going to do that with, with this small adjustment to um, the, the brighter tones in here. Now let's see if I push highlights. Push it really far. Yeah, it's bleeding out too far. So maybe it may be a small nudge. So these are these are super subtle things. I'm going to keep them. Um, I'm pretty close to being done with this photo. One other thing I want to try. Graduated filter. 
uh, dodge is fine. We'll drag it up from the bottom. And the idea is, like I said, this is starting to turn into a very brighter and airier photo. So if I do something like this, but maybe cut that in half, what does that do for me? Let me turn off that, that pin before and after. Yeah, it just evens out the exposure. I kind of like that. So I think I think I'm done. I think I'm going to just stick with this. Uh, part of me is saying, ooh, what about going into, say, on one and adding in some, some crisper contrast on the rocks? I don't want to overpower the, the, the feeling of the scene. So I think I'll, I'll leave them as is and, and not do that. Uh, but let's try, you know what? Uh, I'm double guessing my guess health here. Uh, let's try one other experiment to see if I want to do that at all. Let's get another gradient here. And from here is fine, uh, H key. We can see where that pin is. You can see it's affecting this lower part of the scene. Range mask again. Uh, show the luminance. I only want this to affect the very deep shadows here, right? So the rock areas. Uh, let's get the smoothness cut down. Um, and I'll probably be okay with what it's picking up in the, the sand. Um, but it's losing the tops of this. Uh, let's open that back up a little more smoothness try to introduce some more of the the top part of that rock well, let's try this what we're trying to do I'm trying to gauge whether or not I want to send this somewhere else okay turn off the exposure pop clarity pop texture really far what is that doing for me before after now I'm affecting the, the whole, the, the, both of the gradients I added, but just kind of toggling back and forth, deciding do I want that punch on the rocks or not? And I think I do. All right, so I'm going to send this over into on one. Um, so let me instead remove that pin. I'm going to send this into on one so I can add some pop just to these rocks. And let me do that with uh, edit in, effects, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, landed it on one, and let's, in effects, add that dynamic contrast filter. I'm going to see that punch in the rocks already. Nudge the smalls, nudge medium and large, before and after, before, after. Like it, want to limit it to just the rocks. Go into the masking area, luminosity mask to start with, and notice that I'll do the view here. Notice that the, the red areas, let's, let's switch the mask mode so we can see that a little better. So the black or darker areas is where the effect is being removed. The brighter areas where it's being applied. I want the opposite. We'll invert that mask. Okay, much, much better. And now I can play with levels and window to kind of just dial that in to exactly where I want it. So if I get that white part brightening up so that... that brighter the rocks get, the more of this contrast is going to be added to those rocks, and that's exactly what I want. Okay, do not want to introduce it there. Let's take the end points on the levels down. So taking that out of there, and this will start removing it from the rocks some. Um, let's shift midpoint over a little bit. That's pretty good. It's okay for me to introduce a little bit of contrast in here, because there's not a lot of objects there to really worry about. Something like that. Let's turn off the view. And now look at before and after. Before and after, I can even punch up that effect a little bit more because I'm really just hitting the rocks with it only. And as a fine tuning of it, so I see, I, I keep toggling this off. Let's leave it on for a second. <laughs> Don't drive you crazy here. Here's on, here's off. Watch the sand when I turn it back on. On. It's adding a little bit of crispness there. I want that gone. So, view. I have my masking brush. I'm in paint out mode. Uh, my feather. Let's make that nice and big. Make a nice, healthy sized brush. And I can just kind of remove that out of the sand. Um, matter of fact, let's do that at a lower opacity. Maybe something like like 50. Now let's try 55. And that will just let me fade it out a little better. So I can take some of this away from here, like that. I can take a second pass and take more of it away from here. 
So it'll really just blend in nicely. And now let's take a look at that. So turn off the view. Before the effect, rocks are a little soft. After, rocks got some punch. Let's take a look at the sand again before the change. After the change, I'm not seeing the sand jump up a little bit. I'm happy with that change, and that's all that I want out of uh, dynamic contrast. I'll hit done and send this on back over into Lightroom. So finished up, let's review how we fared here, what, what came out. So these are the three images that I'm left with, actually two. This is a virtual copy so we can see where we started. So we started with this straight out of camera. Did a bunch of adjustments in Lightroom and primarily tweaking the color a little bit with a profile. Adjustments to exposure and that curves control really helped. Some texture. But uh, just letting the, the, the photo breathe and kind of evening out the exposure so that foreground got opened up. And then the last thing was adding an extra little bit of punch to the rocks. That is a subtle change. I'm going to go back to what was in Lightroom. Kind of watch this center rock right here. Three, two, one. Change to the one with the extra punch there. Just that little bit of extra stuff out of uh, dynamic contrast. Could I have coaxed that out of Lightroom? Probably, but at least for my workflow and uh, my familiarity with the tools, it was faster for me to do that with dynamic contrast. It may not have seemed as fast because I was narrating the whole thing, but you know, keep that in mind when you're watching a, a video like this where someone's talking through their edits. That adds a lot more time to the editing thing, as evidenced by the length of this video. So let's wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed the live edit. Got questions about photography? Drop them in the comments below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.